Mary Oliver was a Pulitzer Prize winning poet. She had that gift that poets have to see the world from many different angles. And she once wrote, there is life and there is opera and I want both that she saw what we all know, that there are different sides to life, that there is the dramatic, where our emotions are up and down, and there is the mundane, where everything stays the same, that there are surprises which we could never anticipate, and then there is the predictable, things that we could see from a mile away, that there are windfalls where things just seem to fall into place. But then there are hard fought battles where we are white knuckled and we grind our teeth. And Mary Oliver says, I want both. Both the daily tasks and the breathtaking moments, both the passionate and the practical, because both are necessary to life. And we find both of them woven into our faith. There are countless stories throughout all of scripture about calling. There's Abraham and Sarah who are called and set out into the unknown. And then there is Deborah who provides steady leadership and wisdom for the people of God. There's Isaiah who's called to speak but does not know how and yet he is willing to try. And then there is Peter, who stands tall and confident for a while, but then falls flat on his face, but learns how to lean into the grace of God. And then there's Mary, the mother of Jesus, full of joy and singing praise to God. In all of those stories about calling, we find the passionate and the practical. And when Jesus responded to his calling, he waded into the waters of baptism, standing there in the River Jordan by John the Baptist. It was a stained glass moment. It was beautiful that he waded into those waters. He was plunged down into them like the power of grace washing over this world. The heavens opened up. It was a thin place where heaven and earth met. And a dove descended like the power of the Holy Spirit. And there was this voice that said, this is my son, my beloved with whom I am well pleased. And the only thing that spoke louder than that voice was the silence. The people were speechless. It was a breathtaking moment, full of grace and truth. It's why we pack our bags and we travel and revisit that river each and every year to remember Jesus' baptism. Maybe to recall our own, or at least to reflect on our journey of faith. It reminds us of our shared calling, standing there at the river, which is full of passion as it inspires and renews. But then there's also the practical side of baptism. 
which the words of the prophet Isaiah remind us of as he is talking to the people of God and all the challenges that they face. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. That Isaiah was reminding the people of the Exodus, where the presence of God came to the people, crying out for help in Egypt, dealing with the oppression of slavery. And then God led them through the waters into freedom, like the grace of baptism. But that journey was full of challenges. The people were being chased by their enemies. And they didn't have food or water for the wilderness in front of them. And they even regretted leaving Egypt, thinking it was a mistake. That there are all these challenges and pitfalls that we find within our shared calling. That there is passion and beauty, but there is also the hard and the practical. And when we face the hard and the practical, we have to remember the other side of our calling, the assurance of God. I will be with you. I have called you by name. You are mine. And strangely enough, if we ignore the hard and the practical, we will miss out on the beauty and the passion. That as beautiful as Jesus's baptism was, when he emerged from those waters and walked out of that river, he still had mud on his feet. That he went out into the wilderness to face temptation. And then he began his ministry to others, dealing with all of those challenges that comes from serving the needs of the people around you. That there are a few simple things that help us deal with all of those challenges of our shared calling. That they are the ways of Jesus, the ways of love, commitment, humility, and kindness. That they turn out to be rather practical, but they lead us to the beauty of grace. Cecil Sherman in his own words, was born, bred, and buttered a Baptist. He not only helped form and create the Cooperative Baptist Fellowship, he helped lead it in its earliest years. And when he was leaving Broadway Baptist Church in Fort Worth, it is said he was in his office one afternoon, packing up his books, on his bookshelf, putting them in boxes because the moving van was coming in a couple days. And the chairperson of the newly elected search committee dropped by the office to talk to him. He was just driving down the street and thought, I bet Cecil's in the office and pulled over and stuck his head in the door. Cecil's back was to him as he was just removing books off of the bookshelf that the chairperson of this newly elected search committee wanted to talk to him about what they should be looking for in the next pastor. And when he stuck his head in the office, Cecil's back to him, he said, Dr. Sherman, I just wanted to have a conversation with you before the search committee starts its work to get your input on what should we should be thinking about and looking for in the next pastor. And it is said that without turning around, Cecil said, Oh, an honest minister. 
And the chairperson was a little stunned. Surely there's more to it than that. But pastor, what about preaching and teaching and pastoral care? Cecil said, oh, those things are important. But if the minister's not honest, it doesn't matter. That the simple, practical ways of Jesus remain the most important. I had a friend who took his family to Disney World years ago when the kids were still small. They planned that trip for months. They had a notebook full of details, itineraries, reservations, details and notes. They wanted to hit all the highlights to get everything in, to go to all the parks, experience all the rides, get pictures with all the Disney characters. It was a full week. It was everything he hoped for. And as they were driving home on those long stretches of interstate in Florida, he turned off the car radio. He asked everybody in the back seat, did you have a great week? And they all screamed out, yes. So he said, well, what was your favorite part? I mean, there was so much to choose from. And almost in unison, they all said, the hotel pool. We should never discount the simple, basic, or practical because it can reveal the beauty of grace, which is quite helpful, especially when we are wondering, what should we do with our shared calling? Tony Campolo, well-known author, speaker, sociologist, minister, has spoken on college campuses across the country about calling. And after one of those evenings where he spoke to an auditorium full of hundreds of students, one of them came down that long flight of stairs to talk to him afterwards. And the student kept saying, I do not know what God is calling me to do. It is something Compolo had heard said countless times. And Compolo's advice was, just do the things that you know you are called to do until you figure out what else you might do. That we are all called to love God and to love neighbor. That we are all called to the ways of honesty, commitment, humility, and kindness. We're all called to the ways Jesus. And we can begin with those things until we figure out what else we might do. And it is beautiful and challenging. It is passionate and practical. And on those days, when it is rather hard. And there will be days where it is rather hard. We can remember the other side of our calling, where God says to us, I am with you. I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You 
are mine. Amen.